In the world of sports, there are those athletes who not only excel, but dominate a sport. On any given day, that individual performs at a level that exceeds all others. Over and over, they prove that no one is better. They are the best at what they do, and as a result, the best is expected of them. Greg Laganis is one such athlete. Over the past five years, Greg has dominated the world of diving like no one has, past or present. 23 national titles, three world titles, and the only one in diving history to score a perfect dive in international competition. Combining strength and grace with that perfection, Greg is considered the greatest diver ever. And today, you'll see the brilliance of Greg Laganis as he competes in the U.S. Platform Diving Championship live from Bartlesville, Oklahoma, as well as same-day tape coverage of the Women's Platform Championship on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. You're looking at the long rolling plains that are so characteristic of the state of Oklahoma. It's a state in which the people are justifiably proud of their heritage, their preeminence in agriculture, petroleum, and the world of athletics. And today that pride will be felt once again as the U.S. Diving Championships conclude a week-long competition at the Frontier Pool here in Bartlesville with the Men's and Women's Platform Championships. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford, and we're anticipating a tremendous afternoon of competition from the 33-foot platform here in Bartlesville. It is hot. The temperature hovering right around 100 degrees, but nevertheless, the finest divers from throughout the United States, both men and women, have gathered for the competition. Included in that field is the one and only, the incomparable Greg Luganis. Greg Luganis, who has won 23 national titles, three world championships. He won a silver medal in Montreal in 1970. Many say he's the finest diver the sport has ever produced. We'll be covering Greg Laganis and the men's competition live a little later on today, but we are also going to be covering the women's competition, and working with me today is Cynthia Potter. She had a great career. It spanned nearly 20 years. She won 28 national titles. She won a world championship, and, of course, she won the bronze medal in Montreal in 1976. Cynthia, you're quite a package. You really are. What do you anticipate today? Well, thank you. I anticipate the two world champions, Megan Nyer from the springboard and Wendy Weiland from the 10-meter platform, to battle it out for a championship here in Bartlesville like you've never seen before. Can I put you on the spot? Who will win it? Well, I'd have to go with Wendy just because she's been more consistent in the past on the 10-meter platform. She is the reigning world champion on the 10-meter. Megan Nyer has had more success on the springboard but is just gaining confidence and coming into her own on the 10-meter platform. She has been second in the national championships before. She's also on the Pan American team with Wendy Weiland. So I would have to bet on Wendy, but I wouldn't say that Megan would be out of it, and she could possibly upset Wendy if Wendy happens not to be as consistent as she has been in the past. But right now we have a surprise leader after six dives. It's Michelle Mitchell. She has a lead of about four points over Wendy Weiland. Then it's Meg Nyer, and then it's Debbie Rush. Mitchell on top, and that is a surprise at this point. Ready now for the final two dives, and our first diver will be Meg Nyer, and she has her work cut out for her, Cynthia. Yes, Meg's going to be doing reverse two and one half somersaults in the tuck position. Meg can do this dive for nines, but it's not a dive that she traditionally has done real well. She's been a little erratic on it in the past. She's got a high degree of difficulty. We'll see what happens. She had sevens in this dive in the preliminaries. I would say Meg will probably be real pleased if she gets sevens or above on this dive. That'll be a good dive for Meg. Currently in third place. Behind Michelle Mitchell and Wendy Nylon. Michelle. Meg didn't have a good dive on that one. She jumped out a little bit too far. And a little Went short little. on it, too, wasn't she? Right. Something? Went short of vertical. Ooh, that's going to hurt. She is in the fives. Here's the replay. Meg has a pretty strong jump here. She jumped out a little too far away from the platform, and that's why she's not able to complete her revolutions. She splashes towards the other end of the pool. 
And she has moved temporarily into first place. Here's Debbie Rush now. She's 23 years old, out of Ohio. She dives for McDonald's Divers of Ohio. She's ready now on the platform. Debbie just did a great three and one half somersault. 2.7 degree of difficulty. That'll definitely help her. She did miss a dive earlier in the contest. She was in fourth place before this dive. As you can see, she picks up some eights and some nines. Here's the replay on Debbie. She really sets herself up, gets a good takeoff, nice strong jump, perfect distance from the platform, kicks out, goes in very clean without a splash, super dive. She's happy with that one. Now here's Michelle Mitchell. She was in first place coming into this round. She's put on a tremendous performance. Michelle's doing a forward three and a half somersaults tuck, 2.7. This is the dive that Michelle hates the most. It's one of her best dives, though. Oh! Frank, I don't know how she could have done that dive better. She's going for it. She has really been on it today. Michelle Mitchell, 21 years old. There it is. Eights and nines for Michelle Mitchell. That will move her firmly into first place. Watch this jump. This is absolutely gorgeous. Hits the tower like she means it. Tight tuck, kicks out, knows exactly where she's going, drills the entry. This is a great dive. For Michelle Mitchell, this is only her second time in the national platform finals, and she's moved into first place. Here's Wendy Wild, and she was kind of the uh, consensus favorite going into today's competition. Uh, we talked to her earlier about her having the most difficult dives in today's competition. Well, um, I want to start doing harder dives next year. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean I'll use them in 84, but it's so that I can be able to use them in 85 and 86. Um, basically, the reason I want to go on to harder dives is because it would give me more of a challenge. I've been doing the same list for about four years, and I think for me, it would be more challenging to try the harder dives. Okay, here's Wendy Wyland. She'll need eight and a halfs on this dive, Cynthia, to take over first place from Michelle Mitchell. This is one of the most difficult dives that a woman can do on the 10-meter platform. Back two and a half somersaults pike. Wendy's been a little scared of this in the past. Real nice dive, solid for seven and a halfs. Maybe just a little short, Cynthia? A little bit heavy on the entry. Mm -hmm. You hit it right on the head. That's what she'll pick up. It's certainly a good dive, but not a great dive. It's a nice, strong jump. Turns it over just a little bit too late. Pretty pike position there. Comes out, reaches for the water, and arches through just a little bit too far. That dive had a degree of difficulty of 2.9, and she does not overtake Michelle, but she moves into second place. So those are the standings after seven dives. Michelle Mitchell is the leader. Then it's Wendy Wyland, followed by Meg Nyer, Debbie Rush. Tremendous competition here in the finals of the U.S. Women's Platform Championship. We'll be back for the final dive. Now, Meg Nyer is the current world champion in the three-meter springboard. We talked to her earlier about the difference between the springboard and the platform. Well, um, springboard mechanically and technically is a more difficult event, but the fear factor on 10-meter can make up for the lower heights of the three meter and with me I've had a great deal of um, trouble dealing with the fear of being 33 feet in the air. I used to be very afraid of heights and that is one reason I've just now come to gain confidence up there. Um, but I think the fear factor can override the fact that it is supposed to be an easier event but for me it's always been more difficult. Here's Meg Nyer, her final dive. She has a tremendous amount of pressure on her. Meg's doing a back one and one half somersault with two and one half twist. High degree of difficulty, 2.8. This is one of Meg's favorite dives. She's been very consistent on this in the past. Should get sevens or above without much problem. She got it. That's a nice dive. She needed a little over 37 points to move into first place, a little just under 32 points to move into second place. That's Ooh, a real she nice dive. Well. Good she dive. knows she can do this dive well. She takes off confidently, strong off the tower, wraps that twist up, comes around, stretches for the water, goes in very clean, very neat dive. Meg Nyer moves into first place, and she did it under tremendous pressure. Our leader now after seven rounds, Michelle Mitchell. 
and she has been absolutely spectacular today. Michelle's going to be doing an inward two and one half somersaults pike. This is one of her best dives. She saved it till the end. I've seen her get nines, nine and a halves, maybe even tens on this dive if she does it well today. The degree of difficulty, 2.8. Again, the top two judges, their score is thrown out. The bottom two multiply by three fifths, and then the degree of difficulty. She only needs fours to stay in first place. It's really concentrating. It was a good dive. It looked a little bit tentative coming out. She wasn't quite strong on her reach for the water, but it's a good dive. Cynthia, she hesitated so long up there. Is that uh, the way she does this dive? Well, I'm not so sure that she wasn't a little bit nervous going into this last dive. This is traditionally a real good dive for Michelle. She doesn't jump up as high as I've seen her jump in the past. She may be a little anxious. Let's take a look at the marks. There they are, seven, five, eight. She's in the sevens, seven and a half. Those are very good marks. Here's Wendy Wyland. She knows what she needs. She'll have to hit it in the eight, Cynthia, if she is over, going to overtake our leader, Michelle Mitchell. Oh, this is so exciting, Frank. Wendy can do this dive for eights. I've seen her do it a number of times before. It's a forward one and a half somersaults with three twists. Very difficult dive for a woman. Degree of difficulty, 2.9. I think she can do it. Wendy is so tough. At the age of 18, she very well could be a gold medalist next year in the Olympics. Look at that determination. It's going to be think? close, Frank. She washed a little bit by on the entry. A beautiful takeoff. She Four, might get seven and a half. Seven and a half, eight, seven and a half. She's very eight, close. Seven and a half, eight, I don't think that she thinks she made it. Seven, on this replay, you can see Wendy has a beautiful jump off the tower. She wraps up the twist. She's a little bit anxious reaching for the water and arches over just a little bit. She does not make it. She is in second place. She takes second place behind Michelle Mitchell. A tremendously close competition. Here are the final results of the Women's U.S. Platform Diving Championships. Michelle Mitchell, the surprise winner over Wendy Wyland. Meg Nair was third, and Debbie Rush was fourth. Back in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, where Michelle Mitchell is a surprise winner of the Women's U.S. Platform Diving Championship over Wendy Wyland, Meg Nair, and Debbie Rush. And Kenny Sitzberger is down on the deck right now with Michelle. Michelle, congratulations. You've got to be very, very happy about that victory. This is uh, last year you were runner-up. This year you, uh, you won. You beat Wendy in a really tight contest. What would you say made the difference this year? Um, I think I just tried to be a little more consistent this year. I think my nerves weren't quite as bad as they were. I was a little more experienced. And um, I felt a little more relaxed today than I did the last few nationals. How about that last dive? You looked a little bit nervous on your inward two and a half. My knees were definitely <laughs> shaking on that one. Um, it's been a good dive for me, but recent months, it's kind of been here, kind of there. So I was a little nervous as to how it was going to turn out. Well, congratulations. You got it down for seven and a half and eights and enough to win the contest. Nice going. Thank you. Coming up a little later on Wide World of Sports, Kenny Sitzberger and I will be bringing you the Men's U.S. Platform Diving Championship featuring Greg Laganis. And I'm sure all of you who follow the sport of diving are well aware of the tragedy that took place recently in Edmonton. During the World University Games last month, a young Soviet diver, Sergei Shilibashvili, lost his life when he fractured his skull on the 10-meter platform. Suddenly, diving was under close scrutiny. With the addition of more difficult dives and with increasing pressure to win, the question was asked, is diving becoming unsafe? The fatal dive was a reverse three-and-a-half somersault in the tuck position. Greg Luganis regularly performs the dive in competition without incident. But even Luganis has struck his head on a platform. He knocked himself unconscious in a meet four years ago. He was not seriously injured. Ken Sitzberger talked with Greg about the tragedy at the World University Games and asked if diving is becoming too dangerous. Well, there's a lot of unbelievable dives being done, and, you know, only you can say what, what you're limited. You know, you, you know your limitations, and that's a part of, of competition. It's a part of being in the sport. I don't think it's going to get so out of hand. We, we have so many safeguards against um, having 
people just flinging dives off. They have to go into rules, rules committees and they have to be proven that they can be done. And so we do have a safe sport. Let me ask you this specifically. Is a reverse three and a half somersault too hard a dive to be, to be doing in, in this level of competition, any level of competition? I don't think a reverse three and a half is too difficult. Um, I think it depends on the individual. You know, the individual has his own limitations, and that's where um, a good coach will come in, in hand and say, well, you know, you're ready for it. And more often than not, a uh, coach will talk you into, into a dive that you're ready for, but you don't feel you're ready. I'm with Ron O'Brien, the 1984 Olympic diving coach, coach of Greg Luganis, coach of Michelle Mitchell, coach of Wendy Weiland. He was in Edmonton when the Russian had his fateful tragedy. Ron, in your opinion, could this ever happen to a member of the U.S. diving team? Well, I'd say the chances are about one in a million. However, I would like to say that the accident in Canada was also a very freak accident. In 70 years of diving, there's never been anything like it. I don't think we'll see anything like that again for a long time. I do think that that incident will cause coaches and divers to be more cautious in the future as far as preparing for those types of dives. We'll be back with the men's U.S. Platform Diving Championship very shortly, but right now let's join the U.S. Long Course Swimming Championship in Clovis, California. Here's Bill Fleming. This is Bill Fleming along with Mark Spitz back at the United States Long Course Swimming Championships in Clovis, California. This is a multi-day event and is the most important swimming event in the United States this year. Next event is the 50 meter freestyle for women. This is not an Olympic event and the world mark is not listed as a world's record, simply as world's best. It's held by Anna Maria Verstroppen of Holland, 2564. The American record of 2569 is held by a young lady who'll be swimming here, Dara Torres in lane four, 16 year old sensation from Beverly Hills, California. And the rest of the field we'll set for you. Keep in mind that we are at the opposite end of the field of this 50-meter uh, pool. We are coming back from left to right as opposed to the other races we've seen. From top to bottom, lane one, Jennifer Boyd. Lane two, Tammy Pease. Lane three, Jill Sterkle, the veteran. Lane four, Dara Torres, the American record holder. Lane five, Lori Lehner. Lane six, Kerry Steinseifer, a surprise of this meet, the winner of the 100-meter freestyle. Barbara Major in lane seven, and Tammy Thomas is in lane eight. This is an exciting race to watch, as all sprints are. But I think more importantly than just a race, I think we're kind of keying in on this young lady, Dara Torres, a great sprinter, Mark. In the trial, sometimes she actually uses a conventional start, and in the final, she goes to that split leg start that she's uh, famous for, and we'll see what she does right now. Good start. She did go to that split leg start, but I don't think it uh, helped her right now because running right next to her, Lori Lehner in lane number five actually got off to a better uh, better start. Lori Lehner is in the yellow cap there in the middle of your picture. And next to her now is Dara Torres, and she's really turning it on. Dara Torres with a half a length lead over uh, Lori Lehner. It is Dara Torres who is going to win this one going away at 50 meters. Remarkable. And it's anybody's guess who gets second. And look at this, 25-62. And that is not only the American record, but it is better than the world best. Dara Torres has taken that world best mark away from Anna Maria Verstappen of Holland. A glorious moment for this young lady from Beverly Hills, California, who attends Westlake High School. The start that Dara uses is very much like a sprinter in track would use. It certainly is different than the so-called hang 10 conventional start that most swimmers are taught. Mark? Here's Dara Torres in the center of your screen using that split leg start. It seemed like she faltered just a little bit. Maybe she lost her balance there. You could see her jerk just a little bit before the gun went off. She pikes into the dive and got off a little bit slower than had, uh, I think she had anticipated. Oh, no! Here we see the finish of this race. At this point in time, Dara, in the middle of your screen with the lead, had quite a bit of distance over the rest of the competitors. At this point, though, she hadn't taken a breath for about the last seven or eight strokes, which was unusual, but that actually, I think, helped her get that world best time. And the official results, Dara Torres with a new American and world best mark. Laurie Lehner was second, and Jill Sterkel was third. Now, let's go down and meet this very charming and pretty young lady who also has a great deal of swimming talent. 
Congratulations on that best world time. You didn't do very well in the 100 meters freestyle, and the 50 is not an Olympic event. What are you going to do to try to improve your 100? More endurance and more yardage and workout, probably. Looked like you got off to a little slow start, but you held your breath about the last 20 meters. Yeah, I had to, or else I had to keep putting my head down and just go to the wall as fast as I could. Do you wish the 50 was an Olympic event? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so do we all. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, that sparkling performance by Dara Torres seems an appropriate way to conclude our coverage of these United States Long Course Swimming Championships. This is Bill Fleming and Mark Spitz saying thanks for being with us. And Frank Gifford, along with Kenny Sitzberger, we are in Bartlesville, Oklahoma for the Men's U.S. Platform Diving Championships. We are in the ninth dive of the field of eight finalists for the championship after the eighth round, Greg Leganis had a 38.94 lead over Bruce Kimball. Ron Meyer was in third and Mike Wontuck was in fourth place. You're looking at Lenny Leyland now out of Mission Viejo, a youngster. He's doing a reverse two and a half somersault tuck, 2.7. He uh, finished a little bit too high and went past vertical. That's gonna hurt him. And he was in seventh place after the eighth round. The battle continues between uh, Greg Leganis and Bruce Kimball as they duel once again. Let's take a look at Lenny Leyland again. He's pretty pumped up. Real good jump. Look, he finishes this dive about seven meters, and now he only has to do a stretch for the water, and he, of course he goes past vertical. Tough break. Okay, and coming up now on the platform is young Pat Evans. He's 17 years old, Glen Estes High School in Cincinnati. And he just broke his concentration a little earlier. Kenny, or he could have been right up there. Well, he was in second place, and he did a dive that uh, he just apparently lost his concentration. But that's really the only mistake he's made all day. This is a back two and a half somersault pike position. Just a little short. He's definitely nervous, but he's doing a nice job. He had been in second place, and he went to fifth place, but he came up with a pretty good dive right there. And there are the judges. There are nine judges. You throw out the top two scores, the bottom two, multiply by three-fifths, and then by the degree of difficulty. Nice, nice deep pike. He looks for the water. He's a little short. You know, every year, or every Olympic year, it seems that a youngster comes out of the woodwork, and this apparently is Pat Evans for the 1984 games. He's got a good chance of making the team. Now, up on the platform, a talented young man, Mike Wontuck, good singer, usually sings a national anthem, as a matter of fact, out of the University of Texas. Watch this dive. It's a back three and a half somersault tuck, 3.3, .3. big dive. Hit it pretty well, just a little short. He caught water on his calves. That might hurt him a little bit, but a good, strong back three and a half somersault. Mike Wontock was in fourth place after the eighth round. And let's see what Mike Wontock does. He'll move into first place, but as I said, still to come. Of course, a Greg Laganas, Bruce Kimball, Ron Meyer. And we're going to look at Ron Meyer right now. There's Mike Wontock. While up in the platform, Ron Meyer positions himself. Again, one of those Mission Viejo divers. The dives that these guys are performing now are just incredible. This is an inward three and a half somersault tuck position, 3.2. These dives weren't even in the book when I was diving. And they'll get tougher. <laughs> I don't know how they can. Good dive. He's a tough competitor. Gutsy, gutsy diver. Ron Meyer hits a good one with a 3.2 degree of difficulty. And that should move Ron Meyer up into first place. But of course, now we are going to see the big boys, if you will. This is another angle, which is nice. Uh, right underneath, you can see how difficult that dive is. Three and a half revolutions in towards the platform. Good dive. And here is Bruce Kimball. He had a little slip in one of the earlier rounds, or he'd have been much closer, but right now he's in second place after the eighth round. He should move back into first place with any kind of dive at all. Greg Laganis, of course, in first place. Well, in Bruce's defense, it's been a long season. This is the eighth or ninth major competition of 1983. He's doing a reverse two and a half somersault 2.7, usually a good dive for Bruce. He drilled it. Excellent dive. Virtually no splash when he went in the water. Nice when, dive. When he needed it the most. He needed eights to move into first place. Oh, I'm sure he got those. And he got himself three tens in there. He'll be able to keep one of them. That's the sign of a true competitor. A kid that can come back. He missed a dive. He didn't. He was in first place when he did it. Dropped him out. Here he comes again. You'll see this. Watch the entry. Virtually no splash. Well, he's come back like from a bullet. many things. Kenny, remember that accident in 81? Almost took his life. Came back and was diving seven months later. An automobile accident. Here is Greg Laganis. He had a commanding lead, so he only needs 38 points to retake the lead. And this, the next to last dive. This is one of Greg's new dives. He put it in to beef up his tower list. He hasn't beaten Bruce since 1980. This is a back three and a half, 3.3. Good jump. 
Oh, he drilled it just a little short, but what a dive. Gets so high off that platform, Kenny. It looks like a springboard. If you compare him to the other divers, there is virtually no comparison in terms of how high he jumps, not to mention the rest of his diving, of course. Let's take another look. Watch this jump. He, there's buildings behind him. That gives you some perspective. One, two, three, finish. Oh, nice dive. And a tight tuck all the way. Greg Leganis has moved into first place. He only needed fours to get the first place. So he got sevens. So Greg Leganis is in first place. Bruce Kimball is in second place. Ron Meyer in third. And we'll be back with the final dive. On a hot summer day in Oklahoma, and that could only mean temperature right around 100 degrees. We are live, the Men's U.S. Platform Diving Championships. The final dive coming up for the eight finalists. The men, of course, compete in 10 dives. They have four compulsory dives, if you will, six optionals, and we are in the last of the men. Ken Sitzberger, <laughs> they separate it right here, don't they? Well, they sure do. There's, uh, the dives that these gentlemen are doing are so complicated that it's just uh, it's incredible to think that they can do them and, and perform them successfully and go in the water straight is just yeah, earlier, my we, belief. earlier we had the winner of the women's platform championship Michelle Mitchell right now you're looking at Rick Theobald he was in last place and he leads off this final round of dives of the field of eight so back one and a half three and one half twists 3.2 out of the Longhorn Diving Club Austin Texas good jump Oh, Pretty straight dive. up and down. That's going to help his, his score. It's going to help his mental attitude because he mm -hmm. hadn't been diving real well up until then. That'll leave a good taste in his mouth. <laughs> That's for sure. And you're right. He's got some nines in there. Rick Theobald. The power and the strength that Rick has, he's uh, not quite as strong as Greg, but you can see he jumped almost as high. You can see that he finished the dive high in a nice, good, solid entry. So Rick Theobald, you can see he was delighted with that final dive here in the competition. Now we'll look at Dan Watson, youngster, 20 years old. Student at Harvard University, and an excellent student he is indeed, coached by Mike Brown. He's doing the same dive that Rick just did. It should provide a pretty good comparison. Back one and a half, three and one half twist. Key is the takeoff. He's got to get a good solid jump. His head, arms have to extend over his head. They did. Excellent dive. Better than Rick Theobald's dive, and he should get a higher score. And Watson, that dive, 3.2 degree of difficulty, so that should him help him considerably. Yes, he's got a nine in there. Okay, the key to this dive, the arms have to come up, extend over the head straight, straight through, then he begins his twist, he finishes it real high, about five meters, and puts it right away, no splash. What do they say, Kenny, spatial orientation, <laughs> where they know they are? How in the world do they know where they are? It's a kinesthetic sense. It's the ability to know where you are in relation to up and down and sideways. Here's Lenny Leyland out of Mission Viejo. He had a couple of really fine dives earlier. Good, strong diver. Same dive. He went a little bit past it. He stretched out a little bit strong on the finish, and he went past vertical. And Lenny Leyland, who was in seventh place after nine rounds, will probably remain just about there. Seemed like he was okay. Cut his arms off a little. He didn't extend quite as high as Dan did, and I think that affected his finish. He ducked real hard on the finish and went past vertical. Point four. Next diver up is young Pat Evans. He was a surprise, and he's going to do an unusual dive. Kenny, why don't you describe it? He does it beautifully. Watch this. He's going to walk, and now he goes right up into his handstand. He's the only diver doing this. There was one diver earlier that did it, but it's a walking arm stand, and he must hold that for three seconds, which he does. He's in excellent control. Forward somersault after that. Good dive. Didn't quite extend fully on the finish, but a real nice effort for the 17-year-old high school diver. It really is. He's held it together well, considering he's in the same field with Greg Laganis, Bruce Kimball. And he picks up marks. You won't believe this young sir in a year or so, um, as he has time to mature, just being able to compete with these world-class divers is, uh, has got to give him some maturity. He can go home and say, I've been there. They aren't all that good. I'll be back. I'm sure he will. <laughs> Here's Mike Wontuck now. Mike's been strong all day. He's got a back one and a half, three and a half, twist, 3.2. Pretty diver. Good extension. Nice dive. Nice dive. Straight up and down. Mm, he hit it beautifully. The sophomore from the University of Texas, Mike Wontuck. Seven, eight, eight, eight. There are the marks. Eight and one half. He's a very consistent diver, very pretty, and he's got a good attitude. He realizes that Kimball and Luganis are very, very difficult to beat, but he never gives up. He's been third several times, but he hangs in there. Good dive. Feet one apart, just a little bit on the finish. 
Okay, and now up on the platform, third place after the ninth round. This is Ron Meyer. He's 20 years old, and again, out of Mission Viejo, his coach, Ron O'Brien, who coached the Olympic team next year in Los Angeles. Big, big dive for Ronnie. Back three and a half somersault from top to position, 3.3. .3. This, this is one of the new dives in the book. He's got a really jump. He's got a good, strong jump. Oh, he's ah! it. The crowd is up on their feet. Oh! Frank, I can't believe how good that dive was. I mean, I've oh. seen him do it well, but that was either uh, just a bit of a fluke or whatever. But if he doesn't get tens, I won't believe it. There they are. Five tens across the board. Oh! He'll hold three of them. Here Look it is again. Look at this. Almost effortless. Three and a half somersaults. You got to get dizzy, but no, he knows exactly where it is. He kicks out. Look at the extension. And watch this entry. No splash. Ron Meyer you knew. He got out of the pool. He knew he had a great dive. And that puts a little bit of pressure on Bruce Kimball, who had problems early. But there's another look at Ron Meyer. He had 97 points in that dive, over 97, and the maximum he could get was 99. That's as close to a perfect dive as you can come. He was trailing Bruce Kimball, who's up on the platform now, by about 16 points going into the competition. Here's Bruce Kimball. He was in second place, 27 points behind Greg Leganis after the ninth round. He's got a back two and a half somersault. It's 2.9. It's a pike position, so he's giving up four tenths of a point in difficulty going in. That's got to have to be a difficult situation for Bruce. I tell you, he needs nines and a half to take the lead. Oh! And he hit one. Remember what we said about Bruce Kimball? He doesn't give up. Fascinating young man. That's too close to call. I, I don't know. I didn't see anything wrong with it. He's got one ten and the rest are nine fives. And that should do what it. It does. It inches him, just oh. inches him back into first place. What a competition. Look at this. Back two and a half somersault. This is, to me, is, is even higher in the back three and a half just because you're doing it with your legs straight. Goes in straight up and down. Oh, he needed what? I forget, 81 <laughs> points or something, and he hits for 82, and he moves into first place now. Here is Greg Leganis, and this is, a, this is the dive that's been so talked about recently. Kenny? It certainly is. This is the fateful dive that the unfortunate Russian wasn't able to do in Edmonton and wound up losing his life. It's a reverse three and a half somersault tuck position, 3.4. I've never seen Greg have a problem with it. Look at the jump, not even close. And he oh. drills it, all right. He only made five, five and a half to take over first place and win the men's U.S. platform diving championship. And he hit that beautiful. He certainly did. Beautifully done. Sign of a true champion, he didn't even hesitate. Most difficult dive performed here today. This is the dive again, reverse three and a half somersault. He jumps up, he's not close, he's not dangerous, he's got enough height, enough spin to complete it comfortably. He finishes it high, good extension, nice entry into the water. What's wrong with that? Greg Luganis, Luganis, he is the winner. We have had a thrilling afternoon, however, a tremendous dive by Ron Meyer forced Bruce Kimball to the wall, and he was up to it. He moved into second place, so there they are on top once again, Greg Luganis and Bruce Kimball. Laganus, the winner, Kimball second, Ron Meyer was third, and it was Mike Wan talking fourth place, and we'll be right back. Greg Laganus is the winner of the Men's U.S. Platform Diving Championships. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies to Hong Kong for more top business centers with three-class Royal Pacific service. the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat, the human drama of athletic competition. This has been ABC's Wide World of Sport. Brought to you by Phillips Petroleum, the performance